So I'm very happy today to have with me three of the winners of IIT Delhi's Teaching Award for the year 2023, Rohit Vesh, Venkata Kapila, and Ashish Chiplunkar. Uh, the, the matter of pride for us is all of them are, you know, relatively new in the department and are carrying on the department's tradition of uh, uh, taking pride in their teaching. So, uh, you know, uh, guys, I, my uh, feeling is that uh, a good teacher typically becomes a good teacher because they enjoy teaching. So, what what do you what do you enjoy about teaching, Venkata? Um, yes, everything other than grading and evaluation. <laughs> uh, uh, but okay, uh, more serious note. I think the interaction with the students is what really makes it enjoyable for me. Uh, you know. Even for the most basic subjects to the, the advanced stuff, you know, you get all kinds of very interesting questions and things that even though I've been in this area for about 10 years, I hadn't thought of and then that makes it really interesting. So I think Ashish is another person who enjoys the interaction a lot with the students and you spend a lot of time with them. Would you say that is the thing that you enjoy most or and what else? Is there anything else? Uh, yes, so I do that. I do enjoy that most. Uh, so in particular, I would like to add uh, that I get an opportunity to make uh, so many new friends. Um, uh, so I try whenever I interact with uh, students, I try to um, leave behind my ego, my um, uh, research experience, my education, and just try to be one of one out of them. Uh, I certainly enjoy that. Apart from that, of course, there is this um, the uh, much better clarity that I get. Uh, while preparing for my classes is something I enjoy. Yeah, that's that's a good point. Rohit? Yeah, uh, I mean, very much second what Venkata and Ashish said. I mean, just the the overall energy, right, and the environment that is there in a classroom and uh, the fun that you have while interacting with the students and learning from them. Uh, I think that sort of, that, that buzz is like nothing can... Uh, that's right. That's right. It's an activity which takes you out of yourself Absolutely. also. So that that's something nice about it. That's what I, I like about it. I would rather add that it gives me an opportunity to kind of become famous and uh, be able to influence so many people. <laughs> that's true. That's true. World famous at IIT Delhi. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Rohit, tell me, um, how did you decide that you want to be a teacher? Um, well, I guess... Strictly speaking, maybe from the moment I was born, because my mom's a teacher. Oh wow! Okay. <laughs> so, uh, right. Someone the other way. Uh, but I think overall, I mean, this sort of growing up, I was in general drawn towards research, you know, through my undergrad years and, right. and such. So academia seemed like a very natural career choice. And so far, I felt like I, I do like even from my undergrad days, I did enjoy, you know, explaining what I know, right, right, and right. communicating what I know. And I think. Uh, a teaching career and a research career sort of gives a great opportunity, a unique opportunity to actually combine those interests. That's right. So, that's right. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Venkata, what uh, what would you say? Why? What uh, brought you here? Was it research also, or more, did you? I think more teaching. Uh, more teaching. I think uh, in and this in my case, it started during my undergrad. I see. Um, so one of my professors uh, who taught uh, both introduction to computing and discrete math was uh, was a huge inspiration for me. And at that time, I didn't know that academia involves both teaching and research. <laughs> I see. But uh, I thought, okay, this is what I want to do. So you got dragged into research because of teaching. Nice, very nice. Normally, it's the other way around. Oh, yeah. Would you like at, at a later point, yeah. yeah. I think research also got very interesting. Course, uh, they, they come together. We'll yeah, talk yeah. about that in a minute. If you want to t tell us who this professor right. was? So this was Professor Surendra Baswana. And in fact, he was an IITD alumnus. Baswana was yeah. uh, one batch my junior at IIT Delhi. <laughs> now, now, now I'm feeling old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I also did a couple of courses with uh, Swara and I think by far the most amazing, most energetic, most passionate teacher uh, that we have had. And I mean, you as a student, you always want to emulate what yes. your teachers are doing. Yes. I think he was a great role model. Wow, so IIT alumni are conquering hearts, <laughs> not just the world, huh? That's great to know. Ashish, tell us about uh, what brought you here. Well, so uh, during my undergrad days, I used to uh, notice this big uh, difference in my uh, experience as a uh, in terms of learning uh, my courses. Uh, in two cases, once one where I have a good teacher and the course is kind of interactive, versus in the other case where I have to study pretty much on my own. Right. So uh, 
that was one reason why I thought being in a teaching career is is one way I can make a big difference to uh, the learning experience of so many students. Right. Uh, and then, uh, of course, the amount of freedom that I get over here in an uh, academic uh, career is something which is uh, I can't just can't compare it uh, uh, with the industry. Yeah. Right, right, right. You get the freedom to develop your own yeah. directions, teach exactly. the way you want, topics that you want. That's that's a very important point. Yeah. So, uh, what would you say are the most important aspects of teaching for you, Ashish? Well, uh, as I mentioned earlier, just leave behind my ego, my um, research achievements or whatever. Just be among, uh, uh, try to be one of, uh, uh, try to be like a peer uh, to my students. Uh, Apart from that, I like to give them as much freedom as possible in terms of how they want to learn in the course. I don't like to give them assignments. I don't like uh, to impose any kind of attendance policy. Um, what else? Uh, I think all of Ashish's electives are going to become very popular once we put this video up. No assignments, no attendance policy. Wow. <laughs> great. That's great. So you, you want them to take ownership exactly. themselves yes. of the learning process and you are opening up the space for them that that's a that's so a very that's nice like also to add that i'm still available if somebody is not able to figure out how they want to learn on their own i'm still available that is also a kind of support you give them venkata what what is uh, what are the important parts of the practice the actual mm -hmm. teaching for you right so one thing is i uh, for me the class engagement and class participation is really important so or quite often what i do is i don't give out the solution but I right. sort of try to nudge them in the right direction and of course there are certain problems for which there were some really crazy ideas and you don't expect <laughs> sure. the class to come up with it sure, in sure, 20 sure. minutes but then I just give the starting idea and then ask them to come up with it. and almost all the times they do That's which great. is which is That's very great. encouraging That's and great. Um, I guess another thing that again that contributes to why I enjoy teaching is you know, at the start of the semester uh, you know, you know this uh, there's a teacher and students, right. but I think somewhere in the middle it becomes like a discussion amongst peers. That's great, and that's that great. becomes very enjoyable and fun for me. That's that's amazing. So what, what would you say? What what are the things you emphasize uh, in your teaching practice? Yeah, so um, for me, I mean, I always try to think from the students' perspective, mm. put myself in their shoes, right, uh, and try to uh, design my narrative based on what they might be thinking at that point, right? Because so far I've been mostly, I've mostly found myself teaching courses that involve mathematical proofs. Correct. Right? So in order to develop a mathematical proof, you often have this sketchy intuition, but sure. you don't have like a concrete thing that will take you home. Right, right, and right, right, right. What really brings you joy is that like that step by step yes, of recipe course. that sort of, of takes course. you to the very end. Right. So I, I like I often try to make sure that the proof comes from the students, not from yes, me. Yes. Right? And they get to experience the joy of discovery. So, yes, and that naturally leads to things like interaction, as Venkata was and Ashish were, were mentioning. Um, yeah, you know, I, I have to I have to tell this story since you uh, mentioned this. I, I, my one of my co supervisors at, P, at my PhD. I, uh, there was an introduction session with the new students, and everyone was getting up and saying something about themselves. And he stood up and said. Uh, my name is Christian and I love proofs and he sat down. <laughs> so I, I know exactly what you're saying that the, the love of the proof and the idea of taking the student through the proof. Mm -hmm. But you know, you also said one other very interesting thing that uh, you try to um, think of yourself, uh, put yourself in the place of the student. And uh, I, I've come to believe that um, a lot of re research is not so much about working things out, but communicating ideas. And it is in the communication that the ideas actually develop. Mm -hmm. So, but, you know, we have this kind of back and forth uh, that goes on in academia amongst faculty that, oh, uh, teaching is taking away from my research time and, so, and research is taking away from my teaching and all that. But uh, uh, do you believe uh, that uh, teaching makes you a better researcher? Or do you think that teaching is an imposition on your research time? Rohit, what do you think? No, 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 it's definitely not an imposition. I think uh, there are a lot of uh, connections between teaching and research and a lot of skills that you develop in one help you with the other. Right. Right. Uh, in order to teach something, you need to be a master of what you're teaching. You need to have an in-depth understanding. Often that comes only when you're doing research in that area and you know a lot more about sure. the topic that you're teaching. So, so definitely having research expertise feeds into your 
teaching. Right. But uh, I think teaching also helps with research because while teaching you develop various kind of skills like mentoring skills, supervision skills. Sure. You figure out how to explain things clearly to someone. Right, right. Like what is the best way to communicate something? Sure, sure. And which, like you said, is an integral part of research. Of research, because research so is communication. So I think both of these things feed into each other uh, very closely, and I don't see them as mm. sort of separate things. These are just two, two sides of mm. uh, the same same, same coin in some sense. Ashish, what do you think? So I would like to add a bit. I would like to say that uh, it all. all Often happens in my case that uh, when I'm thinking of some research problem, my thoughts run in circles. And then uh, if I take uh, conduct a lecture or two, I don't think about that problem for a couple of days, then that uh, kind of breaks that loop, gives me some new uh, avenue to think uh, a new, new line of thought. So that is one thing. Uh, other thing I would like to add is uh, I get uh, so basically students in my class kind of become comfortable talking to me or uh, maybe even collaborating with me. Um, so uh, they are kind of confident that um, they will, they and I will be able to uh, do research together. So that's right, right. so, so many good collaborators. That's, that's, that's a great point. What do you think Venkata, teaching helps? Yeah, definitely. I second what Ashish and Rohit said. Um, in multiple ways, one, uh, you know, it gives me a, a lot more clarity on the subject. Right. Um, for instance, I can just. Uh, there have been several cases where, you know, there are certain problems which okay people have worked on for years, and right. I know that this is an interesting problem. Hmm. But when I have to explain this to a class why this is interesting, that gives me a lot more context. Right. That right, is right. one thing. Second, uh, it's helped me identify research problems which uh, which have not been addressed so far, and some of them came from questions from the students. Right, right. Most of them are still un unaddressed, but <laughs> right, you know, right, right. knowing right. that there are these questions to work on. That's and right. Finally, right. you know, the thing that Ashish mentioned, you know, it gives us an opportunity to work with these amazing undergrads. That's right. That's true. Yeah. Absolutely. So I, 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 you know, I want to say uh, when he said that uh, you have to be a master of something to be able to teach it. So I had the opposite uh, experience in the sense that when I wanted to learn something, sometimes I just went to the head and said, I'm going to teach this mm -hmm. next semester. And then I would be sweating because I have to learn it without right, right. to stand up in front of a class. Mm -hmm. And I ended up learning some pretty complicated topics just because I was scared of making a fool of myself <laughs> in front of the class the next day. <laughs> Fear is a good motivator and teaching is a thing because, you know, once you start teaching, you realize mm -hmm. That um, I, I find that uh, the process of reading changes when you teach. Mm -hmm. Because earlier when I used to read, I thought I understood something. Mm -hmm. Then after teaching my first few mm -hmm. classes mm -hmm. and taking that half-baked understanding and having it demolished by the mm -hmm. students, I realized that I really need mm -hmm. to understand before I go ahead. Yeah. So, so, you know, I've heard it somewhere that the best time to prepare for a lecture is right after you deliver it. <laughs> that's a good one. That's a very good, uh, good one. So that that's a good piece of advice for teachers, which we hope they will not follow. Uh, any other advice for people who are looking for a career in teaching or contemplating a career in teaching in an area like computer science or in any other area, Ashish? Well, just go for it. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it can be made a very uh, enjoyable experience for you as well as um, students working with you. What is? Don't treat it as a burden. Okay. Don't treat teaching as a burden. That's what I, I would like to add. Good. Yeah. Um, I mean, especially now is a great time to be a computer scientist. You know, the pace at which discoveries are happening and the landscape of research is changing. Right. Uh, you have to really be on top of your game to, you know, sort of be be an expert on, on different topics and a great way to be an expert at something is like you said, mm -hmm. to teacher. That's right. right. So uh, great time to be a teacher, great time to be a researcher and speci especially a computer scientist. Venkata, any yeah. parting words for the hopeful teachers or, or those who are confused? Mm -hmm. No, I just second what Ashish said, just go for it because I think every teacher has their own style and it takes some time to figure out what is your style. Now, yeah. You may have a role model and you feel okay. okay. Uh, for instance, in my case, I wanted to, when I first attended Professor Baswana's lectures, I was like, okay, man, I want to do it this way. Right. But right. then the first lecture that I delivered, I realized I can't do it his style. You know, everyone has their own style. Just figure it out. Earlier you figure it out, it's better. That's right. I, I agree. I mean, uh, teaching is also a process which teaches you about yourself. 
you learn what how is how you can be effective and how you want to uh, teach so uh, thanks a lot for talking to me i, I want to say one thing is is kind of departmental brag a couple of years ago i happened to look at the data for the uh, teaching award over the years i think it was instituted in 2010 so it's been 13 14 years and i found that although there are one or two other departments which have more teaching awards than us but as a per capita teaching <laughs> awards <laughs> normalized by the number of faculty our department has um, uh, more teaching awards than anyone else and i'm uh, very happy that uh, you know we are keeping this uh, thing going and that you guys are taking it uh, forward thanks a lot for uh, talking to me today and congratulations once again on the winning the teaching award for 2023